Hello everyone, Rochelle here and I'm back to share some yarn goodness with you all today. So today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm doing a Q&A uh, question and answer video. These are questions that were submitted by you all either from my YouTube community tab or through Instagram. So I'm really excited to get started. All right, we have quite a few questions, so I'll go ahead and jump in. And of course, I have notes because I wanted to get these questions um, right, just, just the way you all uh, posted them. So the first question comes from SLP179. And I do believe these first ones are coming from YouTube, but they might be mixed in with the Instagram ones as well. Okay, so SLP179 asks, what summer weight fibers and colorways do you dye? All right, so that's a wonderful question. Um, for in terms of summer and things like that, a lot of people like to use cotton, but of course we still love our wool. So I have a base, it is called Minnesota DK, and I brought a little bit to show you all today. So um, my Minnesota DK base is 50% superwash merino wool and 50% cotton. And each skein has 230 yards, which is 100 grams, and it is a four ply weight. So I have this in six colors, I do believe. So I'll just go ahead and show you all the colors. So this one is called Ocean Volcano. And then we have Bright and Early. Next up is Plum. Then we have Guacamole, Ruby, Orchid, and last but certainly not least, Elsa. So these are the colors that I have on my Minnesota base. Minnesota DK, and of course, um, each one of these is 231 yards each. So these are available in my shop. If you have any questions, let me know. But yeah, so these are what I would recommend for um, summer because you still get your wool, but you get your cotton as well. So I really like these, they're really pretty. Um, they come in a ton of colors and so yeah. I love them. And I actually want to, want to make a project um, for myself using that base. In fact, I've already secured a skein over here from myself that's not in the shop. But the color that I was thinking about using was this beautiful plum color. And I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. I don't know if I'm going to crochet with it or knit with it. I have no idea. But I think I want to do something in this nice plum color. So we'll see. All right, so next question, uh, let's see, it's coming from uh, Malam B. And oh, going back to that last question, cotton yarn is super breathable and super light. So that's one of the reasons why I do suggest it as a uh, summer yarn. All right, so Malam B submitted quite a few questions, which I really do appreciate. So she has about four questions, and I'll go ahead and uh, start with the first one. She asked, have you thought of designing anything? Sorry if you already have. I'm uh, drawing a blank at the moment. So I have designed a few things. Um, they're just basic like hats. I do have a slouchy hat, slouchy hat <laughs> pattern. Uh, that's a crochet pattern. Now it is available on Ravelry, but also I do have a video um, to, that, uh, to that hat. And either I will leave it at the end screen or either I will put it in the description box below as to where you all can go find that slouchy hat. Also, I have designed a headband with a little flower on it. The flower is optional, of course, so I have that as well. And um, I believe I have a whole playlist of tutorials. And so I'm most likely just going to leave um, a link to the tutorials uh, at the end of the video or either... Um, in the description box below. And I do have a um, triangle crochet headband that I am designing it. Well, I've already designed it. I just need to film the video for it. The pattern is already written up. 
Now it's not on Ravelry or anything like that, but um, I want to do the tutorial video first. So that's that. And I don't know what's going on with my throat today. I don't know, like I am kind of getting over something, but it's just allergies. Like it's just crazy. So yeah, sorry if my voice sounds a little weird. All right, I do have some water here and I'll probably drink some tea later because I love tea. All right, so moving on to her second question. Um, do you prefer to crochet or knit or any other fiber craft? I enjoy many crafts, latch hooking, um, sewing, knitting, um, loom knitting, macrame, cross stitch, but my favorite is crochet. Crochet is my first and my favorite craft. I absolutely love crocheting. And um, speaking of like crochet, going back to her other question, my designs are all crochet. I've never like created a knitting pattern. But one thing I am so afraid of is um, designing a garment pattern because I am afraid of the grading that goes into it, the tech editing, the sizes, like it's so intimidating to me. So I haven't um, designed a crochet project um, that's a garment yet. Maybe I will in the future when I get the boldness and the courage um, and the will to want to do all of that, but we'll see. But yeah, crochet is my favorite. Third question is, what is your favorite colorway that you have dyed? Okay, okay, so I have quite a few. I did bring those as well. <clears throat> All right, so, um, gosh, this is hard to choose. This is so hard to choose. So I would have to say, first up is Crazy Peacock. And I just love Crazy Peacock so much because it was one of the first yarns that I ever dyed. And yeah, I love it. It's an oldie but goodie, that's for sure. So this is Crazy Peacock. And next up, I have bronzer. I just absolutely love bronzer. So nice. And then one that kind of complements bronzer would be gemstone oops this is gemstone and this particular um um skein of yarn is dyed on my graffiti uh graffiti bridge silk dk and it has 30 percent silk in it and it's just like so buttery but it's so funny to me how it's just like i don't know it's so shiny and soft and it's such a contrast between like the the yarn with 50 percent cotton it's very sturdy. It's soft, but sturdy. And then you have the um, yarn with the silk in it. It's just like, you know, it's just, it's so soft. It's like almost, yeah. I don't know how to describe it. It's just a different feeling. And that's what I love about yarn is depending on what you want to use it for, there's always a base, there's always a fiber um, for it. But yeah, I don't know. I, I That's one of the things that I love about dyeing yarn is just seeing how First of all, how different colorways will go on each yarn, um, depending on the base and the fiber content, but just also seeing like how each, each one of them feels, they all feel so differently. But anyway, I could talk about yarn all day. It's, it's a really bad tangent to go on. So let's see, that was gemstone. I shared bronzer. Oh, vibranium. I love vibranium. Look at that. Take the label off. I love vibranium. I think vibranium may be a favorite of a lot of people. Yeah, that's vibranium. And so all of these colorways are available in my shop. And I will leave the link to my shop in the description box below. All right, moving on. So let's see. Oh, um, Malon had another question and that was, where do you get your inspiration for your colorways? Okay, yeah, so I get it from a lot of things. I love music. I listen to music every day. And so music is definitely an influence. I mean, all of my bases are named after Prince songs or Prince albums. You know, this is Graffiti Bridge. And this one is Minnesota DK, which of course is where Prince was born and where um, 
his compound is located. So yeah, of course I, I just definitely get a lot of inspiration from music and also I get inspiration from French culture. Um, I get inspiration from my plants. So I have flowers in the front yard and I have, um, uh, vegetables in my greenhouse. And so I'm definitely, uh, motivated by that as well. And sometimes like, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes I will dye the yarn first and then I'll come up with the colorway name. And that's usually how I come up with my colorway names is that after I dye the yarn, it just reminds me of something and that's what I name it. So that's how I do that. Um, and in terms of colorway inspiration, it's just things that I'm into. So nature, um, music, different cultures, things like that. That's where I get my colorway inspiration. All right. So let's see. Okay. I think that was all from Malon. Next up, we have Granny's Crochet. And so, um, let's see. She, she asked quite a few as well, which is so awesome. Her first question is, when you started crocheting, what inspired you to crochet? So I've been crocheting since I was a little girl, probably since I was like eight or nine. I don't know. It's been so long. I don't even remember how long it's been, y'all. It has been forever. But I do remember just being very young and crocheting from a very young age. So one of the things, or there's many things that inspired me to crochet, but one would definitely have to be the older women in my life. Um, my stepmother taught me how to crochet and along with a lot of other different crafts, but also my grandmother, she's had this friend, her name was Gray, and Gray always wore these beret hats, like the one that I'm wearing. And um, I used to tell myself, I wanna get so good in crochet that I can make these beret hats uh, like, like she used to wear. And she had this curly gray hair, grayish white hair. And she's kind of tilted to the side and like her hair would come out. And I was like, yes, I'm going to learn to make that one day. And so definitely just looking at other uh, older women in my life definitely influenced me to crochet. Um, I do have a crocheted blanket from my great grandma, Emma, that I love. And so just... Yeah, older women in my life definitely um, is where I got my inspiration to crochet and, and why I learned. So, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that question. Thank you so much. All right, so um, Granny Crochet asks one more question. What do you do other than YouTube and gardening? I love this question. I, I thought this is a really good question. So what do I do other than YouTube and gardening? All right, I do lots of things. So um, as I mentioned before, I love French culture. I am learning French. It is a ever ending battle. Um, just when I think I'm getting ahead, I learn something new, a new verb tense, a new conjugation. And for those of you all who are learning another language, or maybe you already have, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Um, it's always, something and then there's the cultural aspects that influence the language and you really have to like immerse yourself into it and so I really enjoy not only the French culture but also the French language and so yeah that keeps me really really busy um let's see what else I'm a wife and a daughter and um I have spiritual activities that keep me busy as well um Let's see what else. I have a dog named Peanut who definitely keeps me busy. Um, let's see what else, what else, what else. Oh, so um, I mentioned in a, a past video that I love puzzles. So Sudoku, word search, um, crossword puzzles, um, geez, everything. Like I love doing Sudoku. I have a Sudoku book in my purse and uh, color by number sticker by number. Um, I have, um, a French word search book. And also when I was younger, I loved to do crossword puzzles with the Bible scriptures. And so basically like it would give you 
I don't know, it would give you like a scripture, but then there would be a blank. And so you would have to like find that, find that answer. Um, so it was really cool because you would be given a phrase, but the phrase would be incomplete. So then you had to go to your Bible to find out what the entire scripture was. And so then the word that was missing, that's the word that went in the crossword answer. I hope that makes sense. But anyway, I used to love doing that. And so um, I enjoy doing crosswords as well. That definitely keeps me busy. Um, but yeah, I do quite a lot of things. A lot of quiet activities I enjoy doing. Um, I like to say that I am a very introverted person with a lot of extroverted, extroverted people around me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm an introverted person with a lot of extroverted people around me. That's for sure. Um, yeah, I kind of consider myself to be the boring one in the group. That's for sure. So, you know, I keep a lot of fun people around me and, and that kind of keeps me going. Because if it was up to me, I would stay at home with my crochet and my Sudoku puzzles and I'd be having a good time just doing that. So, uh, yeah, so I hope that answered your question. Thank you. All right, moving on. The next question comes from uh, Franklin Kashmir Benoit. I love that name. <clears throat> okay, her question is, do you intend to work with any other pattern designers to showcase your beautiful yarns? Well, first of all, thank you for the compliment. I'm glad that you find my yarns to be beautiful. I do appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so... <laughs> Basically, I'm an open book. If pattern designers reach out to me, I'm definitely uh, up for it. I'm definitely, I want to hear your terms or, or whatever. But, you know, I really haven't had any pattern designers reach out to me. So, you know, I feel like it'll happen one day. But if you are a pattern designer, you can go to my website and go to the contact page at queensyarnboutique.com and submit your question. <laughs> like, that's really all I can say because um, I hadn't really had a lot of pattern designers reach out to me. Um, I have been featured in a lot of magazines. Uh, well, not a lot. I mean, I've been featured in two knitting magazines. And so that's been really cool. Um, yeah, well, yeah, now that I think about it, in the Nomadic Knits magazine, I did have two um, patterns that were made with my yarn. So I didn't exactly have, I didn't have any input in the actual design itself, but they just used my yarn for it. So I guess you could say that. Um, but in terms of like a pattern designer reaching out to me and they, you know, want to collab, I'm definitely open to that. All right. So let's see what else. Oh. Um, yeah, I think that was the only question that she had. Okay, cool. I want to make sure I get all of them. All right. So moving on the next, um, the next person to submit a question is by off day crochet. I love that off day crochet. Like you all have the best names. Okay. So she had a couple of questions. Her first question was how long does it take? to do a batch of yarn start to finish. So she wants to know uh, in, in terms of dyeing yarn, how long does it take to do a batch of yarn from start to finish? And her second question was, does that factor into the price? Wow, so this is such a good question. I've never been asked this before. It's very interesting. All right, so to I wanted to answer this question very thoroughly. So I did, of course, um, take down some notes. So it really just depends on the colorway that I'm dying. And I can't speak for all yarn dyers, but this is just, you know, my process. So it depends on the colorway that you're dying. Now let's start with a colorway like, um, vibranium. So this is vibranium, of course. Now to do a batch of this, it could take four days. It could take four days to dye this colorway. And let me break it down for you. So day one, I soak the yarn in citric acid overnight. And citric acid along with the heat is what bonds the color 
with bonds the the dye so um day one i soaked the yarn overnight <clears throat> so day two comes around and i do the first layer of dye so i do the first layer of dye on this and then i let it cool and I let the yarn dye exhaust. So in other words, I let this cool and also I wait for the um for the the water to be clear and then I know it has exhausted. All right, and so then comes day 2. Day 2, I do the second layer of color on this and then I do the same process. I let it cool, I let it exhaust until the water is clear. Day three comes around, I rinse the yarn. And by the way, I, I usually let the yarn sit overnight to exhaust. Um, you don't have to, it depends on the method that you're using, but you know, it's not good to like, let the yarn be super hot and then go to super cold. The yarn doesn't really like that. So you need to kind of let that temperature drop. Um, People have different methods of cooling their yarn and, and doing all of that. But for me, I just kind of let the yarn cool naturally. Um, once I take it off the stove or out of the oven, I put it on a rack and I just let it cool overnight, take its time. So then we come to day three. Well, then the yarn needs to be rinsed and then dried. So I rinsed the I, um rinse the yarn, make sure all the citric acid is out, rinse it, and uh, then I dry it. And so for me, I use a spin dryer. So that is day three. So I usually let my yarn dry overnight because you don't want to skein up uh, wet wool. Ugh, yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> and so uh, day four comes up and that's the day that you twist the yarn and you label the yarn. So going from start to finish, from day one to the end, that includes soaking the yarn overnight. Then that includes putting the first layer of dye on. You gotta put the second layer of dye on. Then you have to rinse the yarn. Then you have to dry the yarn. Then you have to twist the yarn. Then you have to label the yarn. That's start to finish for me. And that can take, for this skein of yarn, it can take four days. Now, <clears throat> it kind of depends on the colorway because if you take a colorway like this, bronzer, this only requires one layer of dye. It's, it's pretty simple, um, just one layer of, of dye. So that's right there, it's gonna shave off a day. So it might take me three days to do this colorway. So pretty easy. Um, also the fiber content makes a huge difference because if you take this, uh, merino cotton yarn, the dye is only, um, soaked in by the wool, not the cotton. So the cotton yarn or the, the cotton blend yarn, it requires a lot more rinsing because that dye is gonna rinse out of the cotton, but it's gonna stick to the merino. So it takes a lot longer for the cotton uh, yarn to dye as well. So um, other factors to consider is the actual yarn dyer and what their methods are. Now, as I mentioned, I use a spin dryer. I absolutely love my spin dryer and I can dry I would say four to five. I like to keep it around four skeins of yarn at a time in my spin dryer. And if I keep the yarn in there for like 45 minutes, it's almost bone dry. Not quite, but almost bone dry. And so after I take it out of my spin dryer, I put it on a drying rack and I let it chill out overnight just to make sure it is completely dry. So because I have a spin, um, a spin dryer, like I said, I can dry four to five skeins at a time, let it, you know, hang out on the drying rack for a few hours and it'll be completely dry. Now I like to, um, dry my yarn overnight, but if I really needed to get it done after being in the spin dryer for 45 minutes and then being on the drying rack for a couple of hours, it's going to be dry. Like it's going to be bone dry. Some dyers do not have spin dryers. Um, 
they dry their yarn outside. Or if you're like me, before I got my spin dryer, I had to, pretty much the yarn was still wet and I put it on the drying rack and it would take sometimes two days for a batch of yarn to dry. Yeah, my, my spin dry has just been a lifesaver. Um, so yeah, so those are some things to consider. Um, also the humidity in your house or your, um, or your dye studio has a lot to do with it. If you have high humidity, that's going to affect it as well. That's going to affect the drying time, of course. Um, so yeah, so I've definitely come a long way before I had my spin dryer. I, like I said, it could take one to two days for yarn to dry. And I had like two fans on it, plus a ceiling fan. <laughs> trying my best to dry this yarn because like I said, you don't want to twist up wet wool. So yeah, um, that is pretty much the, um, the process from start to finish. So it takes about, depending on the, the colorway, it could take three to four days for one batch of yarn. Um, and like I said, that depends on the dyer. Some dyers have help. Some dyers are like me and we're just like a one person show, one woman show. So, um, that, you know, that factors into it as well. So to answer your second question, uh, does that factor into the price? <laughs> no, not for me. It does not factor into the price because if I considered all of the work that I had to do to dye yarn, the price would probably be higher. Okay. It would pro probably be higher. Um, so no, you know, of course you have to consider labor and things like that, but no, it does not influence, um, my price. Um, yeah, because I feel like I would have to charge more. Like if I paid myself per hour for how long it takes to dye yarn, it would probably be more expensive. So, um, no, <laughs> it doesn't factor into it. Um, other dyers may factor all of their hours, all of their labor into the price and that's fine. That's them. But for me, um, I don't factor all of the work that I do into the price. All right. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for that question. Um, I thought it was an excellent question. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's see what else do we have? Okay. So our next question comes from Christy Glass Knits and she asks, what are you planting in your garden this season? And are you dying any colorways to match your crops? So I thought this was an excellent question because you know, I love my plants. And so how about we just go into the garden?
Okay, so to answer the second question, no, I haven't planned on uh, dyeing any colorways to match my crops, even though I think that would be a really, really good idea. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, I do have colorways that remind me of my crops, but in terms of this year, I haven't dyed anything to match them. So we'll see. We'll have to see what comes on, uh, comes up later in the year. So we'll see. We'll see. All right, so the next question comes from Marquita Makes of Naughty Crush uh, here on YouTube. And her question is, what is your smallest slash largest project you've made to date? All right, so my smallest project <laughs> would probably be a flower. Yeah, um, I do have a tutorial um, on my channel of how to crochet a flower. And that is probably the smallest project I've ever made. So I like to make flowers and then add them to things. So I might add it to a hat or a blanket or a baby gift. Um, yeah, so I like to make flowers and then add them to other things. So yeah, that would probably be my smallest project. Now, my largest project. So I'm so excited to answer this question. So the largest project that I have ever made was a queen size granny square bedspread. Yeah, queen size. It was huge. So I do have a video. Um, it's an old video that I have because I did this spread a while ago. Um, I will link that either at the end of the video or in the description box below, but I did a video documenting, actually I did several videos documenting my progress on that, um, but I will link one of them. So this thing was huge. So I used a uh, Red Heart Classic yarn, which I believe is discontinued. And basically uh, what had happened was um, an older friend of mine, an elderly friend of mine, she was no longer able to crochet just because of the arthritis in her hands. However, she had a ton of yarn that she had collected throughout the years. And also she really wanted a granny square bedspread. She really wanted a bedspread. So, um, so she asked me to do it. She knew that I crocheted at the time. Uh, I didn't knit, but I crocheted. And so she was like, that's perfectly fine. And so she commissioned me to do this. Um, the, I used four different colors for the Red Heart Classic. I used Olympic Blue, Blue Jewel, True Blue, and Royal Blue. And yeah, so I used those colors and I did the border in the royal blue. And yeah, so I absolutely loved making this blanket. Um, as you can see in the video, it's huge. I believe it was 36 squares total. And each square was 15 by 15 inches. So it took a long time. I want to say it took me almost a year to make it, um, if not a year, close to a year, but it was totally worth it. It came out so great. I was so tempted to keep it for myself, <laughs> but of course I was under commission, so I had to give it to her. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. And also she threw in some extra yarn as well that I could use on another project. So I was like, yay, that was really cool. So, um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed doing that. And I think I made that, oof, it was probably like 2015, 2016. And I have not made anything of that size since because I'm telling y'all that about wore me out. Okay, so Marquita does have some other questions. All right, so she has a few more. She asks, have you ever yarn bombed? No, I have not yarn bombed. I appreciate it. Um, I know a lot of people view yarn bombing as art, but personally it is not for me, but I do respect it though. So her next question is, are you joining any cows, K-A-L or cows, C-A-L, uh, for, you know, knit alongs, crochet alongs. So 
yes, I want to join uh, Crochet Cakes and Crochet Luna Summer of uh, Romance Cow um, Crochet Along. But I have not started on it yet. I know that I have, I believe it's all summer, um, but I have not started on it yet. I need to get my yarn. I need to pick my couple um, because basically you're, you're crocheting something based on a historical couple. And I have so many in mind. So I've, I've got to get on it, y'all. I really, I have to get on it. So her next question is, what are your go-to quick knit or crochet items to gift? All right. So if it's an adult, I like to give away um, cows and hats. So knitted or crochet, either one, but I love the nice chunky cows or either the scarves that can wrap around twice. And I also love making hats and I like putting pom-poms on them. They make great gifts. Um, Especially if you have like a sports fan, you can do the colors in the in the team colors or something like that. Yeah, people really like those. And if it's a baby, I love making hats, but I also love making booties. I think booties are so cute and they're quick and you can make a lot of them. Um, I love making hats and booties for baby shower gifts. Yeah, really, really like those. So yeah. All right, let's see. Next question, and this is still Marquita's question. She said, you mentioned your favorite weight is worsted, but what is your favorite fiber? Excellent question. So I'm going to break it down into two. In terms of superwash, my favorite would have to be merino wool. I love it, love it, love it. But in terms of non-superwash, I have really been into Peruvian Highland wool. Um, yeah, I've been really into that fiber. I, I love it. So yeah. All right, and oh, this is her last question. She asked, this one makes me laugh. Is there an item you absolutely will not make under any circumstances? Yes, there is. Oh my God, okay. Have you all seen the realistic crochet dolls? <gasps> it's not for me. Oh my God, they're creepy. But... I do understand why somebody would want to make one. Um, and I don't mean all crochet dolls. Like there are a lot of crochet dolls that I absolutely love. Um, there's a designer, her name is, well, her Instagram name is My Kind of Thing. She makes these beautiful crochet dolls and I would love to get her to make me one because she makes her crochet dolls look like her client and I think she's amazing. Um, but the dolls that I'm talking about is like, there's some really creepy crochet dolls out there. <laughs> they just creep me out. Um, but you know what? I do understand why some people would like these. And I actually have a, a reborn doll that I have. And I use that to take pictures of baby hats that I've made. And like for you all that know what reborn dolls are, the, are, these are basically dolls that were created to look like real human dolls. And even though this is my doll, she creeps me out a little bit. I have to admit, she does. And so, yeah, I know people love reborn dolls and they have their reasons for it. And I think that's great. It's just me, but there are some, some crochet dolls that just creep me out and I think that might be just some dolls in general I don't know I don't know let me know what you all think about it, it it's probably just me but yeah that's something that I cannot make are the ones where it's like the whole body is done in crochet or like many many years ago there was a woman that would crochet human-sized dolls to look like people like everything their skin everything their clothing everything was made crochet and it looked like an actual human person and it was like it had same uh human proportions and everything and i was like first of all these people they're geniuses they have a lot of patience i think it's really really cool but i couldn't see myself making one i don't know that sounds so bad um let me know in the comment section, is there anything you absolutely will not knit or crochet? 
I would love to know that. All right, so moving on. Um, the next person is Stuff About Stitches. And her question is, hi, Rochelle. How did you choose the bases you carry in your shop? Well, hello. Um, so as I mentioned before, the base names are inspired by print songs, but in terms of choosing the actual bases, um, you know, I just want, when people come to my shop, I just want them to be able to find something that they're looking for, something for everybody. Uh, some people like silk, some people like cashmere, some people like merino, some people like, uh, cotton. Um, but in terms of the bases themselves, I know that I like worsted and if it was up to me, all the yarn in my shop would be worsted, but it's not up to me though. So I do offer, um, DK weight. I know some people love that. A lot of people love fingering weight for sweaters. There are a lot of sock crocheters and sock knitters out there. And so I do offer yarn with nylon in it. Um, yeah, so pretty much I just want people to be able to come into my shop or go go online to my shop and just find something that they want. Um, also, the season makes a difference. So a lot of times during the colder months, I will dye up a lot of more worsted, um, bulky, super bulky types of weights. <clears throat> but that's not something that I do year round. Um, yeah, I don't really make bulky weight yarn year round. So it's kind of a kind of a seasonal thing. So that has a lot to do with it as well. So yeah, and also feedback. Um, you know, a lot of times people will ask, do you carry this? Do you carry that? Um, this fiber or this weight? And so if I feel like it's something that I would like to carry based on uh, feedback or requests, then yeah, that factors into it as well. Um, also some some bases sell better than others. So sometimes I will continue a base or discontinue a base. Um, yeah. So all of that factors into it. So yeah. Thank you for that question. All right. So last up we have Natasha gold. So she asked a couple of questions. So her first one is, is there a definite method to calculate the amount of yarn a person is going to need for each type of yarn? I usually buy too much yarn. We all do. I want to decrease the amount of leftover yarn from my projects. Thank you. Well, thank you for your question. So, um, in terms of calculating the amount of yarn that you're going to need for each project, I can offer a few tips, um, about, you know, why you're having so much yarn left over. And this is what I was thinking of. So your tension, let's just say you, let's just say you crochet or knit, it doesn't matter. Your tension might actually be um, tighter than the designer. So when they made the project, they used a certain amount of yarn, but because your tension is tighter than the designers, you use less yarn for the same project. I hope that makes sense. So what might've taken the designer um, 200 yards to make, it may have only taken you 175 yards because your tension is tighter. So that could have something to do with it. I thought about that. Um, another thing too, that might help you with like, you know, buying too much yarn for a project is if you're, if you go on Ravelry, um, just buy the recommended amount of yarn. Um, you should be fine with that. But I feel like you're probably already buying the correct amount of yarn for your project. So I would look into your attention and see if that's an issue. Um, and if that is an issue, maybe you can increase your hook size or your uh, needle size to do that. Also, I wonder, do you gauge swatch? I know a lot of people don't, <laughs> but if you're finding that you have like way too much yarn left over um, after a project, you might consider gate swatching just to see, you know, do you need to uh, increase your hook or needle size? Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, so, so those are the things. So one, if you find a pattern, just buy the amount of yarn that it calls for. And if you're already doing that, 
It could be a tension issue um, and you might have to adjust your hook or needle size for that. All right, so moving on, let's see. Oh yeah, she has another question. The labels of the gifted yarn I received are in non-English language. The friend who gave me the yarn returned to our home country. I could not read the language. How do I discover the kind of yarn that I have? Are there any special tricks I can do to learn whether the yarns are from an animal or possibly what type of animal? This, <clears throat> this question is such a good question. Um, as someone who is learning another language, I can definitely sympathize with you because there are a lot of patterns out there that I want to make, but they aren't necessarily in English. So I, I get what you're saying. So it looks like you were gifted some yarn that I guess the label uh, isn't in English. And so you want to know like, how can I find out what's on this thing? So there's an app that I use called Google Lens. This app is so good. You can just download it to your phone or your tablet or whatever. And basically with Google Lens is you just, you take your phone and you know, you take the label and let me see if I can pull it up on my phone so I can show you. And you might already know how to use it, but I use this a lot. So you open up Google Lens on your phone and then um, you search with your, your camera. And then you go down to the bottom here to translate. And so up at the top, it's going to say Google Lens. It's going to have detect language. And then it's going to have English next to it or whatever language you decide. You simply hold your phone camera over the yarn. And Google Lens will translate the yarn um, language or the label language to English. So I hope that makes sense. You just open the app. You click on translate, you hold it over the yarn label and it, this app will detect whatever language, um, that's on the yarn label and it will translate it to English. So that's a really good app to have. I use it for a, a lot of different things. So yeah, um, in terms of tricks to be able to tell you, you know, if something is animal fiber or not, or what type of animal it is. I really can't tell you like how to tell which type of animal it is. Well, you know, actually I can, um, just looking at going back to this. So for me, I know that this has silk in it, um, just based on the shine and the way that it feels, but it would be hard for me to look at this and go, Oh, there's Merino in it too. So this one, I can tell that there's cotton in it just by the way that it feels, but I can't really say how to determine which animal it came from. Um, it really just depends on the yarn. However, I can give you a little trick, um, to determine whether something is an animal fiber or perhaps it's synthetic. And so if you feel comfortable, you can do a heat test and basically, um, like I've seen people use different things, but you could use like a lighter. And first of all, you just want to cut like a little piece of the yarn off, just cut a little strand of the yarn off and then you hold it up to a lighter. Um, and if it melts, <laughs> it's acrylic, uh, or synthetic. Um, and if not, it's most likely an animal fiber. I have seen people do that. And so that's just a little trick. Um, I haven't done that yet, but I did see that trick done on, I think it was YouTube. Basically she put, she cut a little piece of yarn off. She put the yarn down and she burned the tip of it and some of the yarn melted and some of it didn't. And that's how she was able to at least tell whether the yarn was uh, synthetic or animal fiber. So those are all of the questions. So I really hope that I was able to answer you all's questions. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. So I hope to do another one soon. Alrighty then. So I'm just taking a second look and making sure that I got all of them. I do believe that I did. All right. So yes, I have all of them. Um, if you have, uh, other questions, feel free to leave them down in the, uh, down in the comment section. Um, 
because I do hope to do more question and answer videos in the future. So if it didn't get answered in this video, definitely let me know and I will answer it in a, another video. All right, so I have links in the description box to all of my favorite crochet and knitting supplies and to the filming equipment that I use. Um, also check out my YouTube community channel or my YouTube community tab because I do ask a lot of fun questions there. There's a lot of fun polls on there about knitting, spinning, weaving, what have you. Um, if you want to support my channel monetarily, I do have some links in the description box below. So thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And you can find me on social media as Queen's Yarn Boutique. All right, y'all. Until next time. Bye.